Welcome back to Artist to Artist. My name is Henry Blackman, I'm your host, and this is where artists come to showcase. We have an extremely, extremely exciting show for you, as we always do. Uh, today, I want to introduce you guys to Mr. Ron Hartwick, a master, master artist. Ron, thank you so much for Thank coming. you for having me. All right. Now, I had the pleasure of talking to you behind scenes, and you just have a miraculous story. Uh, behind your beginnings, and I'd like for you guys, like for you to show, share that information that you shared with me, just uh, uh, behind scenes. A uh, fantastic story as to how you came into art. Okay, I'd be glad to. Um, my career started off when I was 15 years old. Um, I was always wanted to be an artist from knee high, <laughs> and I wanted to be a cartoonist. And so I studied and I wanted to work for Disney World. I wanted to be a, I even got to the part of the characters of, of Walt Disney characters, for example, uh, Mickey Mouse. Absolutely. Here, Polo, come here, boy, come here. <laughs> even their voice, because I wanted to be a cartoonist. <laughs> Did comic strips and those sort, of, those sort of things. And then from there, uh, I got into, um, had an opportunity at the age of 15 uh, to work with Proud Magazine and television show yes. and my uh, job was to do the uh, uh, the digital graphic I mean the graphics behind uh, the news as it was shown wow, and so forth fantastic. so I was 15 years old Channel 11 was the TV uh, a show that that it was on airing it and it was fantastic to see my work on television, have my family around so they can see it. And then when I received my first check oh, from the nice. television station, so that was really nice and, and surprising. From that, I went on to high school. I was in high school, and, and um, it was really nice in high school because I still stuck with art. Yes. I did art, and I was, I was really happy about doing that. And then after high school, as I graduated from high school, I went to uh, college, Kansas City Art Institute. Okay. And there I uh, majored in fine arts and minor in photography. And there I began to develop my gift. And from that point, uh, uh, I graduated from there and then went to uh, graduate school and went on. And from there, I, I started teaching. Taught for two years and then I quit <laughs> for a number of reasons. <laughs> I <got you. laughs> okay, I end up quitting, leaving there, yeah. and then from there um, I begin to select my own students. And in between those times, uh, um, besides being an artist, I was in every facet of art, from sign painting to um, uh, clowning, magic. Mm. Uh, and you would see some of these stuff in my paintings right. of my, my so life. You got your feet really wet, didn't you? Right, and also <laughs> poetry and okay. acting and so forth. So all those things are you would see in my poetry, and I do invite you over to my studio. All right, I will be there. And I would love to have you, show you around <laughs> so you can see. Yeah. And uh, um, that's where my life began. And then now, uh, uh, 1993, I opened up a school called G&H Visual Performing Art Educational Center. It was a non-for-profit organization with its 501c3. Uh, I was the founder and the president of that. It was located in St. Louis. And also, I'm the um, founder of uh, Independent Artists Association. And it's a group of uh, artists that are really into the uh, fine arts. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the more on the classical side classical. of art, mm -hmm. classical art and so forth. Let me ask you this: uh, in the beginning, you said you started off in uh, cartooning. Mm -hmm. What was that transition like? And I had a similar experience as well because of Disney and all that, Marvel comics and all that—that mm -hmm. was my thing as well as a child. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you make that transition to uh, more of the cartooning to the um, classical? What, what, was, that, was that something difficult? Was that something on your mind early, or did it just evolve naturally for you? Uh, no, uh, it wasn't on my mind, but it was easy for me to do. And the reason why, because I consider myself as, as an artist, yes. which I told my, my professor at the time, um, I wanted to learn about art, and he was saying the European artists, that they was masters and so forth, but he would always relate African art to 
um, European art, and he was he would say uh, that uh, they study the the lacuism. Yes, was a form of, of art that was taken from the African art, That's and true. so um, I asked him. I says uh, his name was Torini, yes, and I said, uh, Mr. Torini, uh, if the European are the master, and yet they are primitive, the uh, the the primitive art that they sought after to obtain, right. wouldn't you consider them as masters as opposed of, you know, the European? <laughs> and then uh, one student says, uh, well, because they're good, you know. I said, but they, they trying to imitate something that was unlearned exactly. and so forth. So uh, it was easy for me because I wanted to learn every aspect of art. So I went to the library and, and on, discovered that they only had nine books in the whole entire library. So I got, a petition, I got a petition started right. to get more books. And I, I, I uh, got those books that they have and took it to my professor and said, I want you to teach me every aspect of art, Good the different you. facets of art. So uh, it was so easy. And when I was there, I went to a foundational class, which gives you an opportunity to experience all different facets of art. You know, and then from there you find your niche where you feel that you feel comfortable in. And I was very much comfortable in every parts of art, but fine art, um, I saw that as a means of, you know, that's me. And that's where I started developing more so into the fine arts. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now let's transition over to uh, education. Mm -hmm. uh, you told us earlier that you. Uh, taught for two years, mm -hmm. but uh, obviously there was something there to make you want to go back and and teach again, but just in a different format. How did that uh, come about after your initial teaching in public atmosphere? Mm -hmm. Well, a uh, good question, mm -hmm. and I wanted to teach. I, I love teaching. Mm -hmm. I love it, but I wanted to after my two years experience. You know, right out of college, yeah. into the school system. So I've been in school practically the majority of my life, right. and so never taken a break other than spring, summer break. You know, Absolutely. those type of things. But uh, when I got into the uh, well, when I cross over to the other side of the fence, I've learned that most students didn't feel the way I felt about art, and so yes. that, in a sense, had me to really think about teaching. So I wanted to teach. And I want to continue to teach, so I began to select my students. So I quit <laughs> and started teaching so yes. my own students the way I wanted. And I wanted to teach classical and yes. not contemporary art. I wanted classical uh, art because I saw that a lot of students couldn't even draw from their imagination. Right. You right. see? So if you tell them, to, for example, to draw a dog from their imagination, mm -hmm. they wouldn't know how. Right. You see, or put a, a body in um, in the proper proportion and perspective and so forth. They wouldn't know how, right. and so they had to be taught. And um, so, for that reason, and it was an easy thing to do, you know, right. to step right into it and just do it. That's take fantastic. charge. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, uh, as an art educator for ooh, for the past two decades and some, you know, mm -hmm. it's really nice. I've known a lot of people who started it and, you know, and ended it. Mm -hmm. And um, really, I know the children, students, I know your students range from, I think you told me, five to 92. That's right. Uh, from all ranges, <laughs> you know, they're, they're really blessed to have somebody to come back and really want to, you know, still put that time and put that effort into them. And I, I know they've benefited greatly. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, we've been with uh, Ron Hardwick. Uh, we're going to take a slight break. Uh, when we come back, you're going to see this phenomenal master painter uh, and work. We'll be right back, artist to artist. Welcome back to artist to artist. Too early. Oh, yeah? Go. Welcome back to artist to artist. We've been having a great conversation as well as an art exhibit by um, fantastic artist Ron Hardwick, and we're going to um, just get a bit more information from you before we uh, force over. 
Uh, tell us, um, what do you have going on around town? Because after seeing this work, my goodness, I know it's, 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 it, it should be booming for you right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, right now I'm in my studio, okay. cranking out where I have uh, a series that I'm, I'm starting up. Yes. And it's a portrait, uh, once again, uh, a portrait of myself to start off with. Okay. Uh, and it's called Through the Eyes of an Artist. Mm. And I'm going around the city of Atlanta and started recording about the people that live in on the street called the lost people. Oh, that's going to be and interesting. And so I'm looking for the homeless, I'm looking for the rejects, yes. the derelicts uh, uh, that society has thrown away. I'm looking for those military individuals so that right. I can record uh, their story on canvas and to show the world uh, what we have and how we have uh, abandoned uh, uh, our lost people, so called. Fantastic. That's going to be a phenomenal. And you've got to yeah. uh, fill us in on that when you complete it. Um, yeah. Affiliations. Uh, or do you have any affiliations that you, uh, any groups? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I was at, at uh, a time with the uh, AFA. Uh, okay. That's a black art, uh, group, organization. Yes. Um, and then from their Independent Artists Association now. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a terrific group. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, how do we get in touch with you? Okay. Anyone who wants to contact me, they can uh, call me or email me. My name, Ron Harwick at MindSpring.com, or they can phone me and talk to me directly, 404-453-2653. Once again, 404-453-2653. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You also told me earlier that, uh, that there, there's opportunity to visit studio um, once you, you know, someone maybe calls and gets an appointment. Yes. How, how does that work for you? Uh, well, anyone is interested in, in purchasing a painting or coming by or wanting to take classes, uh, they can call me and make an appointment. Uh, the number, once again, is 404 453 2653, and I'd be more than glad. or uh, my assistant would be more glad to set up an appointment for them to come by and uh, take a walk through or take classes. Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you for having fantastic me. Fantastic information, fantastic okay. art. Uh, we're going to follow you. We're going to let everybody know what's going on with you, okay? All right. You step <laughs> by. <laughs> you guys, I know you've enjoyed this show. Uh, this is another presentation of Artists to, to artists. artists. All right. <laughs> my brother. Hi, welcome back to Artists to Artists. We've been having a great conversation with artist Ron Hartwick. Ron is going to share his magnificent work with us. Uh, Ron, anything to uh, say before we get dive into your work? Yes, uh, I would like to say uh, how you can get in contact with me. My number is 404-453-2653. And if you're interested in classical drawing and painting, I'm the one that you call. Hartwick Studio would love to have you. Fantastic. It's your show now. All right. Thank you. My first piece is called An Artist Framed by Society. It's a self-portrait that was, I've done. And um, I was inspired to do this piece by a, um, a reporter. I was doing a show, and she wanted to uh, do a story on me. And she had problems trying to figure out what type of artist I was. Mm. And so she kept saying I was a... Um, a portrait painter in the landscape. As you can see, there's a variety of paintings here. Right. And I kept telling her that I'm an artist, period. And so she tried to define me. And I told her, well, you cannot put me in a box. I'm an artist. That's right. Whatever the job calls for, I was able to do it. And so she inspired me to do this. And this, the title of this is called An Artist Framed by, by Society. It's to let her know that she cannot define who I am or put me in a box because I'm too big to be in a box. And I wrote a poem that goes with this piece, and it's called A Black Man's Vision. A black man's vision, a comic and fantasy, an eye for realistic things, backed with talent and ambition, makes success, not just a dream, which means that all those ideals I have in my head can be a reality if I apply myself. Never wait for opportunity to knock on my door, because it may skip my door for a number of reasons. So I go out and make things happen. So that's the title of that, An Artist Framed by Society. Beautiful. My next piece is called uh, Summer Jazz. And Summer Jazz, uh, how I came about this ideal, I was 
doing my chores around the house and I had to cut the grass and I decided that I wanted to have a party in my backyard and so this is in the back of my studio there and so I saw that fence there and I says hmm I put my band over there and so I went in the studio did a composition and there summer jazz what Ron, I perceive what a party would be fantastic well yeah. run us through that process of the three-dimensional elements of this piece uh, the viewers, I'm hoping the viewers are getting that uh, effect, but mm -hmm. there's different layers to this painting, uh, which really helps it stand out. Yes, it is a three-dimensional piece. Uh, the figures themselves has been actually cut out. Mm -hmm. The wood is behind the fence is, is um, also been cut out and painted on top of it. And the background is a full painting in the background that gives that three-dimensional quality there, okay? I am very interested in uh, illusion, creating illusion, and I basically work in uh, tropical lord, which means deceiving the eye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and my next piece over at the, uh, is called, um, my next piece? Yes. Oh. I'm oh, sorry. The next piece is called um, the one that I saw at the bottom. It is called Bookshelf. And that is an ideal. It's a tropical lord painting as well. And then the fruit of the spirit is on top. What gave me the idea for the bottom piece is where, where um, I was in my studio and this was actually set up with the, ex with the exception of the, the piece of paper on the left hand corner. Okay. I added that to create that illusion, pull out a book, and be, began to paint. I like the composition, so I actually worked that from my studio. Fantastic. Okay. The Fruit of the Spirit is the top. Um, is all the stuff that is, that is nurtured and is to have a biblical content to it. Um, it deals with the fruit. You heard, probably hear that word, the Fruit of the uh, Spirit in the Bible. And that has something to do with that. Uh, those items that you see that I use in this still life, the white, the red, the green, all those complement one another. And so when you get into the word and the fruit of it, you see there's nourishment in those uh, particular uh, vegetables and fruit Fantastic. and so forth. Okay. Let me ask you this uh, real quick. You brought up spirituality. Uh, how important, and I know you've uh, incorporated that in a few of your pieces, I think most of your pieces probably are, mm -hmm. uh, start in, in, with that spiritual presence. Mm -hmm. uh, how has that spirituality, uh, you know, how have you worked that into your work through the years? Uh, how important is that to you? Tell our, our viewers just what goes into to that, uh, making that a part of your work. Okay, uh, well, everything, uh, my gift, is a gift from God, yes. and I use it to glorify Him. Yeah. And I try to depict things that relates to spiritual, have a spiritual tone to it, so that when I'm asked about it, it gives me an opportunity to minister to other people about the uh, the uh, artwork. Right. And so I can able to. That's the door to open up a conversation to explain about the painting and that sort of thing. Absolutely. And then it leads to other things. Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what else you have. Okay, and then the one down the bottom is called the uh, magic of art. And it's mm. all the traits and the tricks and the, and the gimmick and the illusion of, an art, of a magician. Yes. And seeing that I'm a magician myself. That's right, I was about I to say, that's some of your roots right there. That's right. I incorporate <laughs> uh, those items as some of my trademarks, uh, the things that I use. Even in my painting, you notice... I, one of my trademarks is that I paint, I paint the frame included into the painting. So every one of my paintings, you can see there's a frame. Uh, when you see the frame, you're actually looking at the whole entire picture. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the illusion part is, is when you see the dimensional, 3D dimensional of the painting and so forth. Sometimes it's, you can reach in there and just take right. it out. 
those images. And so, you know that makes sense. You, you uh, earlier during our discussion, you talked about illusion, and of course your experience with uh, being a magician. And I'm looking at, and you still have some more pieces that you're going to show us, but uh, a few pieces where, well, actually most of them here, where you have that illusion, where it's like a frame. Mm -hmm. And for the viewers, that's not actually some of these pieces. That's not actually a frame that's in there, but he painted that frame, and it looks exactly. just like a frame, and it's exactly. a, a wonderful use of illusion. Uh, how did you go about, because, you know, one of the toughest things is uh, with an artist, and you know, is to try to get your niche, you know, that style, and I see right now with the frames that you build, mm -hmm. illusional frames that you build around mm -hmm. your pieces, mm -hmm. that is definitely your niche. Uh, is, how did you come up with that? Because it's so different. That is so different. I, haven't, I, I don't think I've really seen that before. Well, actually, uh, how I came with that concept, you know, every idea that you, uh, uh, comes to your head is not always yours. Right. You know, if you look at it spiritual-wise, you right. always have two voices that speak to you. Absolutely. The good and the bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, but this particular time, I was walking uh, by a window uh, I mean a mirror and I just happened to see my reflection and I cut through a and behind me was a, a frame and as I went through that frame I stopped and paused and saw myself hmm <laughs> and there at that point was created awesome. the frame awesome. mm -hmm. all right okay and then the next painting next to that is the tools of an artist Mm. Uh, these are the things that I use to create all these paintings, the brushes, the palettes, uh, the books, the, the skull for the anatomy in which I study because I do portraits, a, yes. a lot of portraits uh, for families and uh, even dogs, <laughs> you know, pets <laughs> and whatnot. But anatomy is one of those key uh, um, things that I study. As you can see, uh, artist handbook and those yes. are the some of the books that I read for reference, for information and knowledge and so forth. Right. Knowledge is power and the only way you can get that is reading. That's right. You see. So uh, this composition was made to show uh, my viewers um, some of the tools that I use in order to create pieces like that. Fantastic. Okay. And the next painting next to it is called Biltmore. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, this is the illusion with the frame, and yes. you see the balloons Beautiful coming illusion. out of it and so forth. That is uh, one of the places that I visit, and I thought it was so beautiful, and I photographed it, and I said, I want to capture this moment, you know. So I was flying high, which yes. brought the balloons in, right. but, and then, of course, you see the bird coming out of it as well. So you have that triangle effect Absolutely. that makes you, which this tail points right back to that building, which is Biltmore. Now, uh, this is uh, Biltmore Estates, right? Yes. In North Carolina? Exactly. Uh, I've had the pleasure of going with my wife uh, years ago there, and I know mm -hmm. just how that space looks. Mm -hmm. Tell the viewers how important it is. You know, it's one thing to see, see something on you know, paper as a photograph, mm -hmm. as opposed to being on site. And obviously, you saw this, the, 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 the image is so vivid. Mm -hmm. uh, the colors are so, you know, they just really stand out. But as an artist, how important is it to actually go on scene at times? It's very important. Nature is your best teacher. Mm -hmm. It has all the colors, the composition, the balance, and all those things that in, uh, an artist needs in order to develop and grow in their craft. Develop your gift, mm -hmm. and then you will see that, uh, and, and one way to do that is by uh, being uh, right on the spot, drawing nature as you see it, because right. it can teach you a whole lot. You know? That's and, right. And that's, uh, uh, that's a moment that I had the opportunity to be right out there to feel the wind blowing right. and, and the sun and the changing of the lighting and that sort of thing. So you have to think quickly on your feet right. when you paint in landscape or, or on location. Right. That's one of the things. And then uh, last but not least, we come to another spiritual piece, and this is called um, God wisdom versus man wisdom. Mm. Throughout our life, we, um, we seek for knowledge and fame and fortune and power 
and we strive for those things. As you see, this is a, a, a blackboard. If you're a teacher, you can relate to this yes, because indeed. those are the <laughs> things that you, uh, one of the tools that you use in order to uh, teach your students. Well, here you can see Einstein's figures back in the back with the chalk and that sort of thing. Um, then you see the weight of the, um, the books. The books represent all the knowledge that man goes after uh, for finance, health, um, marketing, all those things that he craved for in life. Well, he tried to obtain that knowledge so he can be wise in making decisions and those type of things. But on the uh, right-hand side, you see just one single book, and that book is the Bible. And then in, in the very middle, there's an egg. And within that egg, you'll see there's a man inside of that egg. Mm. And so uh, scientifically, that would not hold up. The weight of those books on the left side would pretty much crush and also lift up that one book. But this says because of the, the substance of God's word being so powerful and, and uh, God wisdom is make man wisdom foolish, that God's words are so heavy that it lifts up those books. And then another thing about man that, doesn't, that, that he doesn't realize is that in that egg, there's a man inside. Yes. All those things that he are after, he's standing on top of it. Look at that. Look because at that. of his relationship with God. Wow. And so, but by the mercy of God, he keeps the, the weight of that books from crushing man. And so the title of Man Wisdom versus God Wisdom is fantastic. the title. Absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, you've just witnessed the phenomenal art of Ron Hardwick. Uh, very powerful pieces, man. That was something else. We're going to be right back. Thank you. <laughs> Good work, man. <laughs> Thank you.